G'day all, it's Colin from PC TLC and thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm going to be installing MX19.2 Petito Feo once again. I'm going to be installing this with a separate home partition this time. And also I want to take the opportunity to um, change the desktop around and see whether those changes uh, stick in the freshly installed desktop. So we're putting um, the KDE Plasma or the MX KDE Plasma to the test to make sure all those things are working okay. So let's go to Tweak Panel and let's move um, say the bottom panel to the top. I'm not much of a top panel guy normally but we'll do this for the purpose of the video and to see whether it's still on the top after we've done a fresh install. So that's on the top. I've got others here. Uh, nothing that really um, interests me at this point in time anyway. So let's close that. Now what we want to do is we probably want to add a few things into the um, panel. Um, things like, uh, what, can we, what can we add? In the system, uh, we can add um, console. Let's pin that. Pin that to the task manager, which is up there. Office, LibreOffice Calc, pin to task manager. Um, VLC Media Player, that's pin that to the taskbar. And we also got system, we've got in system. Cases guard, let's add that to the desktop, which is now there. So those changes, in theory, should be all there once we're in the new desktop. Now the other thing I might do is uh, configure the system tray and in the entries uh, we do have simple screen recorder showing here but what we want to do is we want it to show up in here all the time. So I'm going to go down here and put that on shown, apply that and there it is there. I can right click and pause recording and so forth and OK. So that's the changes I'm going to make. I uh, don't know whether um, changing the desktop background will do anything, but let's try that as well and give it the fancy couple of balls there. Okay, let's do that. Now, the installer, I'm not really sure about the installer. I've tried it already. Um, I'm going to run the partition tool, which is what I did before. Now, I had MX installed before. Now, I'm setting up this but I'm a little bit confused about a couple of things so let's delete all these and start from scratch and apply that apply so that's deleted so we're starting from fresh now I may have forgotten to set ESP but because for some reason when I got to the second uh, part of the install after it starts installing, I couldn't choose the boot partition. So I may have forgot to do a step in here. So that's why I want to start again. So um, new partition table. So you can select partition from here, but uh, I've got this one selected. That's my USB. It's running the live disk right now. So device, new partition table, GPT, create that and apply and apply. So that's done. Okay. So now what we want to do is create new FAT32. That will be our EFI boot. I'm going to make that 512, 512 megabytes. Okay. Then I'm going to create a new, make that a Linux swap. That'll be labeled swap 4096 megabytes. OK. Then we'll have a new uh, root partition and we'll make that 61440, which will be a perfect 60 gig hard drive or partition. And then this one will be just, we'll go for the default XT4. That's going to be home. That'll be my home and we'll take the rest of the space. We'll just click OK. 
and they're all primary partitions by the way and we'll apply that and apply and OK I think the mistake I made in the first one is I need to go to the properties and probably set this boot ESP so so I didn't do that that's probably why I didn't find it boot ESP and click OK and apply so you don't have to apply that in gparted but in this one you do so that's the mistake I made okay so now we can start the install custom install so I'm going to select my root partition which will be this one here home partition will be the home so you can see the labels are there so the labels come in handy swap partition will be swap and the boot partition so this is the one that was showing up was the live disk now it's um, the upper the opposite way around this time so this one is showing up here so we're just going to select the boot as the root partition that's what we want to boot now in the we're going to do a second install after this. I'm going to put some data in the home partition and we're going to reinstall and preserve the data. So not at this point in time. We just want to install it with this separate home first. Let's go next and yes. And now it's selecting correctly the EFI boot. So I forgot to put the boot ESP flags on that. That's why it was showing the other it was showing this one here and I couldn't select this one so I was wondering what I did wrong so I've started the video all over again let's just go through all this and keep Samba next Australian English Australia and West 24-hour clock Next. So that's um, default password and root administrator password as well. And I'm going to click here, save live desktop changes. So I've changed the wallpaper, I've added this here, I've added one, two, three here, and changed this one to show here. So hopefully uh, that all changes. So let's go next. And all we've got to do now is sit back and wait for the install to finish. So that is the install complete. So what I'm going to do now is um, go into the freshly installed desktop and see if our changes have been made. So this time installing MX Linux on with MX Linux uh, written to its own USB I got the NV RAM error again uh, didn't get that last time but I already had all my boot ESP set up and I, I didn't change it. it was already set up so I don't know if it's got something to do with that but I'm, I'm assuming this will not boot I may have to redo the install so if that's the case some of these changes might be different but I'm not gonna record the changes again. I'll try and make them as close as I can as what they are here but I may have to do another reinstall. I'll have to, I'll see about that. It looks like the chain looks like the um, install won't boot. So the last time I got the NVRAM error and I'll, I'll put it up on screen anyway because uh, I've recorded it but I I didn't talk about it when it happened. <laughs> I, was, I was a bit uh, surprised that that did happen to be honest so let's see how we go so here we are back in the live desktop and as I thought um, I didn't boot I had to reinstall I didn't do anything I just reinstalled that's all I did now I think I know what the issue is with the NV RAM error when I booted that USB there was a lot of options in the F8 boot menu uh, on this time that I booted, on the second install, there was only a very few options. So I don't know whether for some reason the F F8 boot or the boot menu in the system is remembering 
too many choices there and maybe the one that I selected was just not correct or something but I think it's got to have something to do with that because there was only a small amount of choices on the second install so that that was very interesting so here we are in the freshly installed desktop with all the changes made now I think I may have had added spectacle and VLC I think I added one of those in the previous install the failed one and I've probably added another one I can't remember what I did there but cases guards on the desktop the panel is on the top simple screen recorder was already installed and the wallpaper itself was in the background so everything all those live system changes worked flawlessly not a problem um, I just had an issue with the install that's probably an issue at my end it's definitely not an issue with MX but it probably can happen to you just like it happened to me but anyway all's worked well so I'm just going to add a uh, put place a USB in here and we're going to add some uh, some files into the um, home folders so we'll just see how it copes with the USB plugged in and we get the usual uh, notif notification what would you like to do with it I'll definitely open with the file manager now I put a few things in here uh, that's my I've got a picture um, an ISO M MX 19.2 KDE ISO so what I'm going to do is uh, copy that to uh, let's open another window yeah, so we'll put that into downloads and we'll paste that and we'll have a look up here if you have a look at the little spinning wheel up the top there that tells you the progress of the copy and it fills itself in so we'll just keep an eye on that and we'll just skip ahead okay copying has finished um, then we'll go back to um, documents and I've got a document here paste that I've got my videos that I made for the first install copy those into videos and I've got the video that I'm doing now let's just do that anyway copying finished music I've got one music file And there you go I took a screenshot on the live disk um, and let's just have a quick look at that and if we have a look at that 8% without screen recorder so the CPUs were very quiet I was raving on about or I was carrying on about how it's using so much up to about 20 odd percent or whatever because uh, even KDE is pretty low these days so there's uh, the proof there that <laughs> it's 8% just so I'm not carrying on about it <laughs> I don't know why I was so um, fixed on on that uh, high CPU usage just it's never caught my attention before but for some reason it did but uh, yeah it's it's very low it was about four percent six percent there at one stage so that's pretty good and I've got this picture here copy that and paste one file so there we have it so we've got some documentation in every um, every folder we've got something now it's not a lot but it doesn't matter what matters here is there's something in there and what matters is when we do a fresh install which I'm going to do all this stuff is intact in the home folder so that's what we're going to do so we'll do another install and we will select preserve the data on the home partition so that's what we're going to do so here we are back in the live disk of MX Linux now what's going to be um, very interesting here is I'm not going to make any changes to the bottom bar or add anything to here which is what I did before I um, right clicked and uh, let's go to office right click and pin to task manager I'm not going to do that I'm going to leave it as is now what's interesting here is 
in the um, home folder, we're going to pre preserve the data in the home folder. So in the um, config area, it will probably reflect the changes made to this panel being up the top and everything else if it's installed, like simple screen recorder, the changes are made for it to be shown on the panel, which I haven't made here. So that'll be interesting to see what the reaction is there after install and preserving the home data. What's the advantage here is if MX Linux went from 19.2 to 19.3, then they made a 19.4 or they skipped to a version 20. Um, you can install this way and everything in your home data will be preserved. Um, mostly what we're interested in really at the end of the day is um, pictures and videos and all that. It won't show here because I haven't, uh, this is the live disk, so I won't be showing anything in here, but you see me put the uh, the files in the home folders. But the other thing that is important is that um, even though this is the case, you still want to have a backup of what's in your home folder, um, just in case something drastically goes wrong. But this is advantageous in a way that you don't have to go copying and pasting from your external hard drive, your external USB stick, and so forth. It's going to be quite easy to have everything preserved and there and waiting. So it saves all that time. You can have a fresh install, but your data's still there. So that's the advantage of this. But don't forget, always have a backup. Just because you can do it this way doesn't, it, it saves you time, but you still must have a backup, it's very important. So let's get on with the install, custom. So what we're going to do here is, um, this is my root, you can see the flag there, and this is my home. Select swap, the boot will be the root partition, and we're going to preserve data in home if upgrading. So that's what we're going to do, let's go next. Yes, it's already found the boot menu there. That's all good. So like I said, I'm not going to save the live desktop changes. I'm gonna leave it as it is, and I'm gonna see whether it picks up on the configuration files that were in the home folder. I believe they're in the home folder on KDE. I don't know deeply too much about um, the KDE file structure and how it works when it comes to the home partition and so forth. Uh, when it comes to all these changes on the desktop, I'd have to think they're in the home folder, but we'll see what happens. So let's go next and we'll just wait for that. So the home directory for Colin already exists. What would you like to do with the old directory? So reuse it for this installation, rename it and create a new directory, delete it and create a new directory. Let's reuse it for this installation. Next, okay. So we got the nvram variable update failure again. We're gonna have to reinstall this one as well. I'll do that off screen again. I don't know why this error comes up. I'm really not sure why. Just cannot work that out. So I'll, we'll uh, shut this one down and we sh I'll reinstall off screen. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing anyway. Hopefully I don't get, it seems to be a random thing at this point. Um, I've had two successful and two, <laughs> two um, failures, so I don't know. Here we are back on MX Linux 19.2 desktop after installing and preserving data on the home partition. As you can see, I'd made no live changes. The, the panel was at the bottom. I didn't add any of these things here. I still haven't. It just remembers the home configurations. So what it's done is it's remembered all the configurations within the home partition and it's um, configured it the same after install. So the wallpaper's the same because um, it remembers the wallpaper, rem remembered where the panel was. So that's uh, pretty handy. So it remembers all that stuff. 
I did have a problem with install again. I installed, I think I had two failed installs and then the third one it installed with, because I still kept getting the NVRAM error. Um, I think from memory, because I did it so fast, I think I didn't, I didn't enable my network on the third install that was successful, I did. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. This still just seems to be very random, so I don't know what's going on there. Hopefully Dolphins watches this video because he normally does. He'll probably explain to me that I've told you before, because <laughs> I'm sure he has. I cannot remember what it was, so I'm sure he might know. So as you can see, KSIS guard is on the desktop as well because I created a shortcut there. But I didn't create the shortcut in the live disk on the second install. Just remembered it. So having installed three times, I preserved the data three times. And if we open this up here, let's get rid of the hidden files. And as we can see, that document's still there. That ISO is still in downloads. That song is still in music. Pictures are still there. And my videos are still there. So that's worked really well. So KDE Plasma passes those little tests there. It seems to be working as expected. Now that the test has passed, maybe I'll go back to the Tweak tool, MX Tools. Um, go back to tweak and put the panel back on the bottom and apply. And there we go. So that's how you preserve your data on an MX install with, with an existing home partition and selecting to preserve the data on the home partition. So that works really well. So that is MX Linux 19.2, um, installing with a home partition and then another install preserving the data on the home partition. Besides the little hiccups along the way, I'm sure three installs and preserving the data just goes to show that uh, not one of them uh, hiccuped on preserving the data, even though I couldn't even boot it, just did an reinstall. And on the third attempt, yep, no problem. And all the data is still there. So it wasn't just one extra install, it was two extras. And failed to boot, but still, the data is still there. So I'm very impressed with that. That all seems to be working really well. MX 19.2 KDE Plasma seems to be working as expected. And it seems to be functioning with the same quality as the flagship xfce desktop good to see so i hope you enjoyed the video hope you found it interesting and informative and thanks for watching